So for our first one here, um, we have a few things to combine. Let's go ahead and we'll do some powers and then work our way down. Three log x, that means the log of x to the third. Remember the number multiplying the log is actually a power on whatever the object of the log is. Then when we subtract two logs, that's division. So log x to the third minus log seven is equivalent of log x to the third divided by seven. Any questions on that one? Okay. Number two, we have two log y, that's log of y squared, plus three log x, that's log of x to the third. Now the logs that are added together, remember when logs are added, that means multiplication, so that's y squared times x to the third, we're gonna write it in alphabetical order log of x to the third times y squared minus log to the fifth. And again, that log that's subtracted is divided. So that's log of x to the third y squared over five. Any questions on that one? Okay. So these rules of logs make it a lot easier for us to take equations apart, put them back together, and make them easier to solve. On three and four here, we're taking these logs and we're splitting them apart. So for three, we gotta go basically the, the exact opposite order of what we did when we were combining them back together up above. Here, the division is the first thing we're gonna work on. So this would be log of three plus x squared is on top minus log of y to the third is what's on bottom. Now the log of three plus x squared, even though that's an x squared, it doesn't square the whole object. It's the object of the log, the whole object has to be squared in order to move it out front. So there's nothing we can do there. But minus log of y to the third, that is cubing the whole object, so we can bring that power up front. Three log of y. And that's it, there's nothing we can do with that three plus x squared. Number four, again, there's a division there, so I'm gonna split that down. So we've got log of x minus two squared minus log of five x. Now the log of x minus two squared, I can bring that two out front and make it two log of x minus two. Now again, since that's subtraction, I can't split that up any further. I can only split up powers, division, and multiplication. Over here, I have to be careful. This is minus log of five x. I have to, I can break that log of five x down into, since it's five times x, into log of five plus log of x. But notice I put parentheses around that because I had a minus in front of that. I have to distribute that minus, that negative. So this is two log of x minus two minus log five minus log of x. Any questions there? Okay. Any questions off the homework from last week? Okay, so today we're gonna look at, we've looked at the logarithms and we've looked at the exponentials. Today I wanna look at them together. Remember we've talked about operations and inverses often during this class. I'm your addition and subtraction, operation and inverse, multiplication and division, operation and inverse, even powers and roots. You know, we had x to the power of five, if I want to reverse that, it's the fifth root. The fifth root of x to the fifth cancels each other out, and I get back just x, what I started with. And the opposite is true. If I have the fifth root of x, and I take that to the power of five, I get back what I started with, just the x. So the, the power of five and the fifth root cancel out, 
no matter what order they're presented in. The same is true for our logarithms and our exponentials. If I have a logarithm, or sorry, an exponential, I should say, like five to the power of x. Remember, there's two parts there. There's the base, that's the five, and x is the power. And what makes it an exponential is the fact that the variable is in the power of that exponent. Up here, this is an exponent, but not an exponential, because the variable is the base of the exponent, and the power is a number. The opposite of an exponential is a logarithm. We might have log base 5 of x, where the log is the base, sometimes called the index of the log, and x is the object. If I have an exponential and a logarithm with the same base, in this case, both of them are base 5, they are inverses. So if I have log base 5 of 5 to the power of x, <clears throat> excuse me, the log base 5 and the base of 5 and the exponential cancel out, and we're left with just x. Likewise, if I have an exponential, 5 to the power of log base 5 of x. Once again, the base 5 of the exponential and the log base 5 cancel out, and that just gives us x. So we can use this relationship between logarithms and exponentials to solve some of the equations that we've looked at before. Before we look at solving an equation like 4 to the power of 3x minus 2 equals 64 to the power of 2x. We looked at that and said the only thing we can do, at least at that point last week, was to make those the same base of the exponential. And if the base is the same, then the power have to be equal. And we did that. Both the 4 and the 64 can be broken down as part of the 2. 4 is 2 squared. Of course, that's still to the power of 3x minus 2. 64 is 2 to the power of 6. Of course, that's still to the power of 2x. So now, I have to multiply the power of Power of a power, I multiply the power. I'll distribute that 2 to the 3x minus 2. So this is 2 to the power of 6x minus 4. 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. I do the same over here. Power of a power, I have to multiply the 6 times the 2x. That's 2 to the power of 12x. Now that they have the same base of the exponent, the powers must be equal. 6x minus 4 must equal 12x. And we solve by adding 4. I'm sorry. We got to get, there's nothing to combine on each side, but we have to get the variable on one side. Before we do the 4, we're going to subtract 6x. Get that negative 4 equals 6x. And then we'll divide by the 6. Negative two thirds equals x. Well, now that we know about this relationship, the inverse relationship between logarithms and exponents, we don't have to get them to that same base and just set the, the powers equal. We can solve anything, even if their base can't be simplified. 
If we had 10 to the power of 5x, well, let's just do this. Let's start out with just 10 to the power of x equals 400. 400 cannot be written as a power of 10, at least not an integer power of 10. It would be an ugly decimal. So to solve this one, I know that on my calculator, the log key on my calculator means log base 10. This is a base 10 exponential. So if I take the log base 10 of that, it's going to cancel out. So I have to take a log base 10 of this other side as well. So on the left side, log base 10 and the base of 10 in the exponent cancel out. I have x equals. On my calculator, I'll do log of 400. 2.602. So there's a solution to that exponential equation. X must equal 2.602. We also had natural logs, e, uh, we would have e to the power of x equals 17. So our calculator has a button that automatically calculates log base e, that's the ln key. So if I do ln of, log, of e to the power of x, the log base e or ln is going to cancel out the e. I just have to do the natural log of 17. So on the calculator, ln 17, I get 2.833. My math lab will tell you where how many decimal places it wants the answer rounded to. Make sure you're paying attention to that. In class, I will typically round to three or four decimal places depending on the calculation. But be aware that my, my math lab will pick you about that. So if it's an exponential with a base of 10, that works great. If it's an exponential with a base of e, that works great. But what if it has a different base? What if it is 5 to the power of x equals 600? We don't have a log base 5 on our calculator, although that's what we need to solve this. To cancel out that base of 5 in the exponential, I need a log base 5. On the left side, it's not a big deal. The log base 5 and the base of 5 in the exponential cancel out. We're left with x. On the right side, however, I have to calculate the log base 5 of 600. Well, if you recall from Wednesday, we had that change of base formula. In order to calculate a log of a base other than 10 or e, log base a of b is equivalent to log of b over log of a. So back here, this is log of 600 divided by log of 5. So I'm going to calculate that. It doesn't matter whether they use log or ln, either one will work as long as they use both of them the same. So log of 600, make sure I close the parentheses, divided by log of 5, close it again, 3.975. I might have 3 to the power of x equals 108. So the log I need here, since it's an exponential with a base of 3, is a log base 3. Now again, on the left side, the log base 3 and the base of 3 and the exponential cancel out, leaving me with x. Log base 3 of 108 is going to be log of 108 over log of 3. So log 108, close my parentheses, divided by 
log of three. I get 4.262. Now I had said it doesn't matter if we use the log key or the LN key. Let me show you here. LN 108, close the parentheses, divided by LN of three. Notice we still get exactly the same result. So it doesn't matter what log you use there as long as both logs are the same. Well, it gets a little bit more complex than that. We might have 7 to the power of 2x equals 180. So to solve this, it's going to be a log base 7 to cancel out that seven in the base of our exponential. So those cancel out on the left side, log base seven and the base of seven, giving us two x. On the other side, I have to do the log of 180 over the log of seven to see what that gives us. Give me 2.669. I'm not done yet though, because my power, my exponent here wasn't just x, it was 2x. I have to get x by itself by dividing by two. So x equals 1.334, I divide that out. Notice by the way, when I did that, I did not clear my calculator and type the 2.669 2 back in because that's a rounded number. Um, if I was going to write it down and type it back in, I would want to go at least one more, if not two more digits beyond what I expect my answer to be reported in. Because if I round it off, if I want my answer in three digits and I round it off at, to three decimal places at every point, that round off compounds and it would be wrong. If I had typed in 2.669 divided by 2, this answer would have rounded to 1.335. So make sure you either keep it in the calculator like I did, or when you write it down and type it back in, you go at least one if not two decimal places beyond where you want your answer rounded to. I usually recommend two decimal places beyond. Of course, it can get even more complex. We might have six to the power of three x minus seven equals 348. So the log I need to reduce this, it's a base of six in the exponential, so I need a log base six. So the log and the base of 6 cancel out. I have 3x minus 7 equals, on the other side here, this is log of 348 over log of 6. Three point two six six. Now I have to solve the equation. I have 3x minus 7 equals 3.266. First thing I have to do is add the 7. So 3x equals 10.266. Add my 7 here on the calculator. Now I'm going to divide by the 3. 3. To get x equals... 3.422. Any questions there so far? Okay, I'm going to have you guys try one in your notes. 2 to the power of 5x minus 7 equals 500. I'll give you a minute or so to work on that. So the first thing we need to do here 
It's an exponential of the base of 2, so we're going to need to do a log base 2. So it cancels out the 2 in the exponential, giving us 5x minus 7. That equals log of 500 over log of 2. Now we know that 2 to the power of 9 is 512. So we know that this better be a little bit less than 9. So 8.966 is what we get. Now again, I'm keeping this in the calculator as I proceed to solve this. 5x minus 7 equals 8.966. I'm going to add the 7. So 15.966 equals 5x. Divided by 5. x equals 3.5. One nine three. Any questions there? Now, of course, before we can solve the exponential, we have to make sure the exponential is by itself. We can't solve it if it's not isolated. We can't do the, the logarithm to cancel it out if it's not isolated. We can have problems like 5 times 3 to the power of 4x plus 3 minus 7 equals 520. In order to solve this, we have to get the exponential part by itself. This is the exponential right here, the 3 to the power of 4x plus 3. We have to isolate that. So basically, it's like solving an equation first, then doing the exponential, the logarithm to cancel the exponential, then we solve the resulting equation. So I start out, I'm going to add 7. So 5 times 3 to the power of 4x plus 3 equals 527. Then we divide by the 5. 3 to the power of 4x plus 3 equals... 105.4. Now the exponential is isolated, it's by itself. So we're going to get rid of the base of the exponential. It's a base 3, so we use a log base 3. So log base 3 and the base of 3 and the exponential cancel out. We have 4x plus 3 equals, now of course this is log 105.4 divided by log of 3, so let's do that. Log 105.4 close parentheses, divided by log of 3, 4.240. And now we go about solving this resulting equation here. We're going to subtract the 3. So 4x equals 1.240. And we'll divide by the 4. x equals 0 0.310. This is very common when we we might have 7 times e to the 3x plus 1 plus 13 equals 97. So when we go to solve this, our exponential is right there, the e to the 3x plus 1. We have to isolate that. So we'll subtract the 13. 7 times e to the 3x plus 1 equals 84. And then we divide by the 7. e to the 3x plus 1, 84 divided by 7 is 12.
So now we do have a log that is base E, so let's use it. Where do the call in on both sides? So there's no need to do a change of base here. The ln and the base of E and the exponential cancel out. 3x plus 1 equals, that's just ln of 12. 2.485. So then we subtract the 1. 3x equals 1.485. And we divide by the 3. x equals 0.495. Okay, time to let you guys try one. So we're going to do 6 times 3 to the power of 5x minus 9 plus 11 equals 137. So go ahead, I'll give you a minute or so to solve that, and then we'll see how you're doing on this one. So again, our first step, we're going to subtract the 11. So we have 6 times 3 to the 5x minus 9 equals 126. Then we have to divide by the 6. 3 to the power of 5x minus 9 equals 21. Now we're at the point where we need to get rid of the exponential. So the base of the exponential is 3. We'll do a log base 3 to cancel it out. We also have to do the log base 3 to the 21. So on the left side, we have 5x minus 9 equals... This will be the log of 21 over the log of 3. Gives 2.771. Now we're going to solve from there. We're going to add 9. So 5x equals 11.771. Then we're going to divide by 5. x equals 2.354. Any questions on solving the exponential equations? Okay, so then the same goes for logarithmic equations. If I have an equation that looks like log of x equals well, let's just say 4. Now note there isn't a, a base written here in the log, so it's assumed to be a log base 10. The inverse of a log base 10 is an exponential with a base of 10. So if I take each side of that equation and I put it as the power in an exponential with a base of 10, 10 to the power of log x must equal 10 to the power of 4. Well, the 10 and the base of the exponential and the log base 10 cancel out, leaving us with x. On the other side, 10 to the fourth is 10,000. If it's a base other than 10, The log base 3 of x equals 5. To get rid of a log base 3, we have to do an exponential with a base of 3. So that would be 3 to the power of log base 3 of x, and 3 to the power of 5. So the base of 3 is the exponential, and the log base 3 cancel out, leaving us with x. 3 to the power of 5 is 243.
That just simply using the power key on your gun. Just like with our exponential equations, the x doesn't have to be alone. We could have log base 5 of 3x minus 2 equals 3. Now the log is by itself. There's nothing else going on with the log. There's the log, its base, and its object. There's nothing else here. So we can go ahead and use an exponential to get rid of that log. It's a log base 5, so use an exponential with a base of 5. The exponential with the base of 5 and the log base 5 cancel each other out, leaving us with 3x minus 2 equals 5 to the power of 3 is 125. Now we solve the equation that results. We add 2. 3x equals 127. We divide by 3 x equals 42.333, or 42 and a third if you prefer it as a fraction. So what if I have something like ln of x equals 3.5? Well, the inverse of ln, natural log, it's a log base e, would be an exponential with a base of e. How do we do e to the power of on our calculator? Well, first I'm going to cancel out the e and the ln to get this back straight. I have to do e to the power of 3.5. On most calculators, if you have a graphing calculator that works this way, or if you have a two-line display calculator, you're going to find the ln key, and you see that above the ln, it says e to the x. So you're going to either use the second or the shift key, and then here, the e to the x, which is the second function above the ln key. And you'll notice that brings up on our screen e with the power box up there. So in that box, I'm going to type in the 3.5 and hit equal. I get 33.115. So x is 33.115. I'm going to have you guys try two of them here just because it's a little bit trickier to do these with the keystroke. So I'm going to have you do natural log of 2x plus 7 equals... Let's go 83. And then I'm going to have you do log base 3 of 5x minus 2 equals 400. I'll give you a minute, then we'll go over those two. Let's see how you're doing on these so far. So for the first one here, it's ln, natural log. To reverse that, we use e as the base of our exponent. So the E and the LN cancel out. We've got 2X plus 7 equals E to the power of 83 is going to get kind of large. The second LN, 83. So that is actually scientific notation. 1.113 times 10 to the power of 36. So at this point, subtracting 7 isn't going to do a whole lot to affect that number, but we'll do it. We'll subtract 7 in our calculator. So it's still displaying 1.113 times 10 to the 36. We still have to divide by 2. So x equals, let's go back here, divide by 2. 5.564 times 10 to the power of 35.
Back up to number two. So this is a log base three. We reverse that by doing an exponential base three. So that's going to cancel out the log base three, leaving us with five X minus two. Three to the power of 400 is also very large. Whoops, let's try that again. But apparently my calculator won't do that. So that isn't going to work. Did you guys run into the same problem when you tried to do it? Okay. Well, let's uh, go back and do this one. We'll simplify it. We'll do it as 3 to the power of 4. So log base 3 of 5x minus 2 equals 4. We'll do it that way just so you guys can experience solving this. So 3 to the power of 4 would be 81. We'll add 2 to both sides. 5x equals 83. So we'll divide by 5. X equals 16.6. Now, this here, having scientific notation, is very common when we're working with these. Um, solving a logarithmic equ equation, since you have to use that exponential, it's very common to end up with scientific notation either positive or negative, depending on what that power is. Remember, with an exponential, you know, 5 to the power of 2x plus 7, if 5 is positive, we can never have a negative answer over here. With a logarithm, however, it is possible. You know, log base 3 of x can be a negative 2. Because when we go to solve that, we're going to do 3 to the power of log base 3 of x and 3 to the power of negative 2. That's going to give us x equals 3 to the negative 2 is 1 ninth. So that is possible to do. Well, if that were a negative 100 there, then this is obviously going to give us a decimal that the calculator will have to display in scientific notation. Just like with our exponentials, the logarithms can have other things with them as well. We might have 3 times the log base 5 of 2x plus 9 minus 4 equals 2. So just like with our exponentials, the first thing we have to do is get that log by itself. So we're going to add the 4. 3 times the log base 5. 2x plus 9 equals 6. Then we're going to divide by the 3. Log base 5 of 2x plus 9 equals 2. At this point, it's an equation we know how to solve. It is time for a break, so let's go ahead and take a break. We'll come back at 10.30. If you would like to if you get back to break early and you want to solve that on your own before we go through it together, please feel free. Otherwise, I'll go over that at 10.30. When we... Okay, so let's pick up with this problem here. So to undo the log base 5, we do an exponential with a base of 5. So this is going to result in 2x plus 9 equals 5 to the power of 2, of course, is 25. We'll subtract the 9, giving us 2x equals 16, and we'll divide by the 2 to get x equals 8. Now, one of the powers of the logarithmic equations 
if we run into a spot where there are multiple logs, for example, we might have log base six of two X minus three equals log base six of 31. Here's a case where we have identical logs, one on each side of the equation. So we can just go ahead and cancel them out. Six, it's a log base six, so we use an exponential base six. So the sixes and the log base sixes cancel out. We just simply have two X minus three equals 31. And of course, that's a linear equation that we know how to solve rather quickly. We can add the three, two X equals 34, and we can divide by the two. Get X equals 17. Well, that's the simpler form of that equation. We could also run into an equation like log base 11 of x squared minus two over x equals zero. There are a couple of ways we could approach this one. One, this is a log base 11, so we're gonna undo it, we're gonna invert it with an exponential base 11. So that cancels out, we've got x squared minus two over x equals, now what's 11 to the power of zero? Anything to the power of zero is one. Now solving this looks ugly, but it's not. We can multiply by x on both sides, giving us x squared minus two equals, one times x is just x, and now it's a simple quadratic equation. We get everything on one side so that's equal to zero, so I'm gonna subtract x from both sides. x squared minus x minus two equals zero, and then I'm going to factor it. X, my x squared minus x minus two is x minus two, x plus one, and now I'm gonna split those two equations. Either x minus two equals zero, or x plus one equals zero. Solving each, I can add two to both sides, x equals two, or on this one I can subtract one from both sides, x equals negative one. Another way I could have handled that equation, log base 11, x squared minus two over x equals zero. I could have Split this log up into log base 11 of x squared minus 2 minus log base 11 of x equals 0. And then if I had added the log base 11 of x to both sides, I would have ended up with log base 11 of x squared minus two equals log base 11 of x. So now when I go to do the exponential to get rid of the log, 11 to the positive the base of my exponential cancels out the log base 11, I get x squared minus two equals x. Notice I get the same equation as I did before. This is still gonna solve out either x equals positive two or negative one. Well, here's an, this was an example of an equation where we had options. 
we could solve this one without using those rules of, of logs where we could split them up or combine them. But we will run into examples where we have to use those, those rules. For example, this. 3 log base 4 of x plus log base 4 of x minus 1 equals 0. First of all, the logs must be the same base. Both of these are log base 4. If they're not the same base, it makes our life a lot more difficult. Now I can go ahead and combine what I can here. The 3 times the log, where that's saying that's log base 4 of x to the third. Now when the two logs are added together, that means that their objects are technically multiplied. So this is log base 4 of x to the third times x minus 1. That equals 0. Now from here, what I would do is I would multiply out this object. Log base 4 of, that's going to be x to the 4th minus x to the 3rd. And now I'll go ahead and cancel out the log. It's a log base 4. So I use an exponential with a base of 4. So the log and the exponential cancel out. So all I have left is x to the 4th minus x to the 3rd on this side. 4 to the power of 0, we have to be careful. This is where I see most of the mistakes made. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So that is x to the 4th minus x to the 3rd equals 1. So we'll have to subtract 1 from both sides. And looking at this, this is a polynomial equation, so we would have to go through that process of trying to solve a polynomial equation. Trying to think of potential factors here. To really do anything with it, we have to fill in those missing powers of x, the x squared and the x. Our rational root theorem, we have coefficients of 1 and 1, so it's telling us that 1 and negative 1 are really our only options here. So let's see if that divides by 1 and negative 1. So let's do negative 1. So it would be x minus 1 at the root of 1. We're going to do positive 1 here. 1, negative 1, 0, 0, and negative 1. Let's do our synthetic division. We bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Add that, that's 0. Times 1 is 0, that's 0. Times 1 is 0, that's 0. Times 1 is 0, we got negative 1. This last number needs to be 0 for that to be a factor. So that did not work. So let's try negative 1. So it'd be x plus 1. So using a negative 1 here. So you bring down the 1. Negative 1 times that is negative 1. That's negative 2. Negative 1 times that is a positive 2. That's 2. Negative 1 times that is a negative 2. That's negative 2. It's a positive 2. Positive 1. So that's still not a 0. So what this is telling me is there are no real roots to this. So there are no real solutions to that equation. So let's try something like log base 5. of 2 plus 2 log base 5 of x equals 98. On the left side here, there are things we can combine. 
I'm going to take care of this two times the log first. That is equivalent to log base 5 of x squared. So, so far, everything else is going to stay the same. Now I have the two logs that are added together. That means their objects are multiplied. So log base 5 of 2 and log base 5 of x squared combined to be log base 5 of 2x squared equals 98. 98 was a bad number to put in there, but let's see what happens. Now we have to find the power of, get rid of the log, since we got it down to a single log. 2x squared equals 5 to the power of 98. 3.155 times 10 to the 68th. Now we're going to divide by 2. x squared equals, divide by 2, we get 1.052 times 10 to the 68th. Now we square root. Now on many of your calculators to do that, you have to do second square root and then you have to do the answer key so that your calculator keeps that same number in there. And it's gonna bring it down to 1.026 times 10 to the 34th. And there's our answer. So we mentioned last week some applications of these equations. Exponentials are extremely popular when you have common growth or decline or decay. Let's look at growth. One example of growth is inflation. Inflation is just what the annual cost of living increases from one year to the next. Rather than looking at the whole economy, the whole consumer price cost of living, let's just look at a single expense. Since we're all affiliated with colleges here, let's look at college tuition. So let's say that the current tuition and I'm going to use WITC for now just because that's kind of where I work. For 2020 is set at $182 for credit. It is scheduled to increase 6% each year. So let's make a model to represent this. This is very similar to our compound interest that we discussed last week. In fact, we'll do some examples with compound interest before we're done. Remember we had the beginning of the year and compared to the end of the year. The beginning of the year was the starting amount, the base amount, 100%. Well, the end of the year or the beginning of the next year, we have added 6%, which means we're now at 106%. That 106% gets expressed as 1.06. So at the end of each year, the, the tuition, at the beginning of the next year at least, the, the tuition is 106% of what it was at the beginning of that year. So we have to specify that 2020 is year zero. I'll say year T equals zero. 
tuition cost is then modeled as the current tuition of $182. times 1.06 to the power of t. Now an alternative way we could have written that if we didn't want to specify that 2020 was year zero, we could have written cost equals $182 times 1.06 to the power of y for year Minus 2020. It's going to give us the same thing. T is just the number of years after 2020. So let's find the tuition. Predicted in 2030. Assuming that that 6% increase is going to hold constant. So that cost is the 182 times 1.06. From 2020, 2030 is 10 years. It's the power of 10. So there's nothing to solve here. It's just calculate. I'm going to go ahead and punch that in my calculator. 182 times 1.06 to the power of 10 giving me 325.93. So at a 6% annual increase, it is predicted that by 2030, tuition will be $325.93 credit. More interestingly though, would be find the year where tuition first exceeds $200 per credit. So what that means is we're gonna put 200 in for C equals 182 times 1.06 to the power of T. This is an exponential equation that we need to solve. 1.06 to the power of t is the exponential here. We have to get that alone. We're going to divide by the 182. 200 divided by 182 gives us 1.099. Equals 1 1.06 to the power of t. Now we have to solve that exponential. Again, note I kept this in the calculator. This is an exponential with a base of 1.06. We solve it by doing a log with a base of 1.06. So on the right side, the log and the exponential cancel out to leave me with t. On the left side, this is log of 1.099 over log of 1.06. Now note that the 1.099 is the number I have in my calculator. So I'm gonna do log of second answer. Close my parentheses and divided by log. 1.06 is an exact number. Equals 1.619. So T, our time here, is 1.619 years. Let's interpret that answer. That's saying we are between one and two years. But it asks for what year does it first exceed $200? One year is not going to be enough. It won't be to 200 yet. So it is that second year that it will finally exceed $200. So from 2020 plus two years, that is 2022 will be the first year that it exceeds $200.
let's say that your population pallets well, world population grows by 1.4% each year. Current population We're just gonna say seven billion to make our model easy. So let's create our model here. P for population equals the current amount, the seven billion, times this exponential factor. 1.4% growth means we have 100% plus 1.4%, giving us 101.4% at the end of the year. So what we're going to be multiplying by here is 1.014 to the power of t. Now this current population, we're going to say that's a 2018 number. So let's say then we ask, find the population. to the nearest 10 million in, let's go 2030 again, 2030. Now, since this is from 2018, 2030 is 12 years. That's going to be at T equals 12 years. So our population will be 7 times 1.014 to the power of 12. Eight point two seven. The nearest 10 million would be two decimal places after the billion. That's 8.27 billion people. Find the amount of time required for the population to double. So we have our model here. Population equals 7 times 1.014 to the power of t. Now we didn't ask what year would it first be double what it is? We asked how much time. So all we need is T here as a time. We don't need to convert it back into a year. To double means that P, the population, would now be 14 billion instead of 7 billion. So to solve this, we divide by 7. You get that 2 equals 1.014 to the power of t. Now, this makes sense because we're done with it. So it should be that, that growth factor should be 2 or 2 times. So now we're going to the log base 1.014, canceling out our base of 1.014 or exponent to get t, log of 2 divided by the log of 1.014 will be our next move, log of 2 divided by log of 1.014, we have 49.86, so about 49.86 years. So my 1.4% estimate's a little low. It takes just over 40 years um, as a, a trend, at least, for world population double.
Well, this can be used for compound interest. Remember, compound interest, the formula was the future value, the, uh, the amount of money you'll have in the future, is equal to the present value, money you have now, times 1 plus your rate, that's your percent as a decimal, divided by n, which is your number of periods in a year, to the power of n times t. So if I ask you to find the future value of $3,000 invested at 8% compounded quarterly for seven years. So in my formula up here, future value, that's what I'm trying to find. Present value, that's how much money I have now, that's the $3,000. Times, I've got the one. R is the rate. Well, the rate's 8%, but the rate is in decimal form, so that's 0 0.08. N is the one that we have to be reminded of. That's the number of compounding periods in a year. It's quarterly. I make it four, close parentheses, to the power of four times T is our year, so four times seven. So if we punch this in our calculator, 3,000. Now some calculators you can just put in parentheses, some you have to put in times. I always put it in just to be safe. So 3,000 times, open parentheses, one plus 0 0.08 divided by four, Close the parentheses to the power of four times seven. Fifty-two twenty-three zero seven. So at the end of seven years, my three thousand dollars will be five thousand two hundred twenty-three dollars and seven cents. How many years would it take for the $3,000 to first exceed $10,000? So, so now I'm going to be putting $10,000 in for the future value. Still starting with 3,000, still one plus 0.08 is my rate, four is my compounding, but now I'm looking for T, so this is to the power of four T. Oops, my 10,000 disappeared there. So to solve this, my first step is to divide by the 3,000. I have to isolate my exponential, which is that 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4 to the power of 4t. So I divide by 3,000 on both sides. On the left side, I have 3 and a third. Equals, on the right side, I have 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4 to the power of 4t. Now I'm gonna to have to do a log here to solve this. The log is gonna be this as a base, base one plus 0 0.08 over four. On the right side, it just cancels out, leaving me with four T. 
On the left side, after log of three and a third over log of one plus 0 0.08 over four. So log three and one third. So those parentheses divided by log one plus 0 0.08 divided by four. Close my parentheses. And I get 60.80. That has to be divided by four. That's 15.20 equals T. So that's 15.20 years. So it's during that 16th year, again, at 15 years, it hasn't quite reached it. So at 16 years is where the it'll first exceed the $10,000 limit. This also works for de decay. Let's talk about oh, let's look at a I'm trying to think of something that's decreasing right now. Let's just look at the value of a house. If the main thing Maintenance is not done on that house. The value of a house can decay. Let's say it is reduced by 6% each year. Again, this is assuming the maintenance is not kept up. So our formula here now is the value equals the initial value I'm going to call that capital A times 0.94 to the power of T. Let's talk about where that 0.94 came from. Well, we start out with a 100% value at the beginning of the year. We lose 6%. 100 minus 6 is 94% is our value at the end of the year. As a decimal, that's 0.94. Find the time required for a $120,000 home to decrease to $80,000. So in our formula, V is the value after the time that's eighty thousand dollars is over decreasing. The initial amount started at one hundred twenty thousand times 0.94 to the power of we're solving for t. So again, we have to isolate our exponential. Our exponential here is the 0.94 to the power of t. So let's divide by one hundred twenty thousand. Eighty thousand over one hundred twenty thousand is two thirds. Equals point nine four to the power of t. So this is now a log base point nine four. So on the right side, I got t. On the left side, I've got the log of two thirds over the log of 0.94. So log two divided by three, close my parentheses, divided by log 0.94. 6.553 equals T. We can do radioactive decay.
Radioactive decay is based off of a half. Half-life is the time required to be reduced by 50%. So, the current amount of, an, of a radioactive material is equal to A0. That A with the little zero by it is the initial amount times one half to the power of T divided by H, where H is your half life. Find the amount of material left after seven years if the initial amount is 200 grams and the half-life is four years. So not quite two half life here. So we're looking for that final amount. The initial amount is 200 grams times one half to the power of seven is the time, half life is four. So seven divided by four is our power. So this we can just punch in the calculator. 200 times parentheses one half to the power of, I'm gonna put this in parentheses, even though I really don't need to, seven divided by four at 59.46. So the amount left is 59.46 grams out of that 200 grams. Let's find the time to decay to less than 10 grams. Let's say that 10 grams is the safe amount of that. Let's find the time it's going to require to get to that safe amount. So 10 goes in for our final amount. We're still starting with 200. Power of 1 half to the power of T over 4. So our first thing we have to do is divide by the 200. 10 over 200 is 1 20th equals 1 half to power of t over 4. So now our log is a base 1 half. So on the right side, log base 1 half and the 1 half cancel out, we've got t over 4. On the left side, it's log of 1 20th divided by log of 1 half. Log of 1 divided by 2 divided by 1 divided by 2, 4.322. Now I solve this equation by multiplying by four. I get 17.288 equals T. So 17.288 years. So in other words, at the 18th year will be the first time it is below 10 grams. Well, all the equations we've solved so far have been exponential equations. Let's look at solving a logarithmic equation. There's an equation for the 
percent of full height at a given age. So at age X, what percent of your full height will you be? That percent is given as 29 plus 48.8 ln X plus 1. So at age 16, what percent of full height are you? 29 plus 48.8 times ln of 16 plus 1. So we can just calculate this out. 29 plus 48.8 times ln 16 plus 1, close parentheses. It gives, oh, something went wrong there. I got my, my numbers are off a little bit there. Give us 167% of full height. That's not going to be, that equation is not accurate. Something got copied down wrong. Ah, my decimal point's in the wrong spot. 4.88, not 48.8. Let's try that again. 29 plus 4.88 times ln of 16 plus 1. Close Much better, 42.83. percent. So using this model, at what age will you reach 50%? So 50 equals 29 plus 4.88 ln of x plus 1. We have to get that logarithm by itself. So we subtract the 29, this is 21 equals 4.88 ln x plus 1. We will divide by the 4.88. I'm going to have to keep this in my calculator. So 21 divided by 4.88 is 4.303. Equals ln x plus 1. Now to get rid of the ln, we have to do e to the power of, because ln is a log base e. So on the right side, they cancel out. I just have x plus 1 over there. I have to do over here second. ln second answer. Give me 73.94. And then we finish it by subtracting 1. That's 72.94. Obviously, this isn't a great model, but you can see that we can solve the equation using those exponentials. Anybody have any questions? Okay, so there is a homework from last week. It is due Tuesday, due tomorrow. There's a new homework from today. It'll be due Thursday. And of course, there's a quiz on the material from last Wednesday and today. Should be open sometime tomorrow that'll be due this Friday. You guys have a great day. We'll see you on Wednesday.